Today's video is sponsored by OBD11. More on that later in the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm sat once again, as I always do, just sat here trying to buy cars, and I'm actually having a pretty good day of it. I've bought five cars from BCA so far, and they've all seemed to have been at fairly decent prices, which is a hit and miss. Some days you can't buy anything, get anywhere near the prices, and other days you seem to just be winning everything. So I've got quite a few more in my list here for today, but having bought five, you know, I'm how many more I'll be wanting to buy, I don't know. We have been flying with the sales, as Toby will show you, on our board. What's that, 26, 25 in uh, the 23 days of the month so far. So we're getting on for a very good month, which means we need more stock because we're running out. The forecourt's looking a bit bare, but there is a limit to how many I can buy, obviously. But the last car that I definitely want to try and have a bid on, it could could be a bit risky but I think there's good margins in it and that's the type of cars I'm really trying to buy at the moment. Cars that I think maybe even if they are a little bit risky because of what they are have got good margins in. So it's a Discovery 4 Land Rover, the 3 litre SDV6. It's on 101,500 miles. It's had three owners. It's an automatic. So I, don't think, I don't think they did a Disco 4 in a manual. I know they did a Disco 3 in a manual. Someone could tell me I'm wrong but I won't listen to it. It's had nine services, three being main dealer. It looks quite a nice thing. Come around here, Toby, and I can show you at least what it looks like. I think this is probably the best colour, in my opinion. Not, I'm not 100% sold on the wheels, but I do like this kind of... What's the, I don't know what it, would, what it would be, but, you know, like Battleship Grey with the black accent, especially with this big back window that they have in those discos. Uh, so, yeah, it's 2012. It's got a tow bar. It's not got big, you know, showy-offy wheels. It has still got the cover for that so you could take that and stick that back in the boot and it would look a bit neater uh, it's seven seats black leather interior it's obviously being 2012 it's got the giant nipple thing for doing your gear selecting rather than the giant dong thing but it's not new enough to have the lcd do they ever have an lcd screen on a disco 4 i don't know um we've got heated seats we've got climate control obviously we've got navigation and it'll have all your phone and all that malarkey twin sunroof or is that even triple sunroof i don't know so many sunroofs oh it needs a thing there oh heated rear seats as well a few wrinkles from where the back seats have been folded up that's fairly common and that's obviously a replacement cover see they've obviously had something when they folded down the rearmost seats the third row they obviously had something in there, which is annoying because they've dented that forever. But maybe with a heat gun and some serum or something, we could get that back. And what are they showing us here? Is it that this third brake light is a bit knackered or... Don't know. Nothing too drastic. Oh, I've zoomed in rather than... A bit of a scuff on one of the arches there. But on the whole, quite a tidy looking thing. 2012, 100,000 miles, good good service history. Yes, they've all got their risks, and everyone's like, oh, the three litres, the crank snapper. Yes, I know, I get that. But actually, you know what? Personally, I've had better luck with three litre TDV6s from Range Rover than I have the 2.7. It's funny, as the generations go on, everyone seems to change their mind. The 2.7 used to be like awful, terrible, they'd go wrong all the time, the oil pump shit themselves, like it did on me several times, and the engine just died. And then it moves on to, oh, the three litres do this. And then the 4.4s have got this. Like, yeah, every car's got its flaw. Um, if I was too worried about that, I wouldn't be in this business. Anyway, so let's talk about figures. It's only five lots away, so we need to be quite quick, really. Let's have a look at Auto Trader. Um, it says cap clean, first off, on here is £7,950. But if we have a look at Auto Trader, it's telling us the retail valuation is just over 12 and a half grand. It's got 68 out of 100, so still popular. Obviously, a lot of people really like these Disco 4s because they're like, it's the last proper, you know, Range Rover that does good Range Rovering things and off-roading. Uh, I want to have a fairly decent margin out of it. Uh, so if I wanted to have about £3,000 margin, maybe a little bit more, the most I could pay would be £9,500 which is obviously over the cap clean anyway. I think it'll, it'll probably go over cap clean, but how far over, I don't know. Judging by, normally I would say it would go over, and but I think nine and a half would be a sensible bid. 
the way it's been going today, we might nick this. I'd be very happy if we did. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. I do this a lot, don't I? <laughs> That's probably a neurological problem. Maybe I just do it when I'm stressed about bidding. I don't know. Anyway, so I've got a bid, a proxy bid in on this thing. Where's it gone now? Of £9,100. Then including your fees and everything, it's going to be like 9500 what I normally do when I'm doing these things is I take the proxy bid off so that I can bid in person. But actually, I wonder if the reason why I've been having good luck today, and the reason I always used to say I like doing proxy bidding and I like bidding online, even when I used to go to go to the halls when it was live at BCA at Bridgewater before all the kind of lockdown, you, they stopped doing it, I would go and check out the cars I wanted, come back here, and even though it cost me an extra 55 quid or whatever it was at the time, to bid online. I would bid from the office, A, because I can get on with other things, but B, I could leave a proxy bid in so that every time someone put their hand up, it would say internet bidder and it would outbid them every time they put their hand up. And I think, I don't know, just a bit demoralizing for them or stop them in their tracks thinking this person's bidding. Oh, each time I put my hand up, they're going, they obviously really want it, so they're gonna bid whatever. And they don't know who it is. They don't know it's me bidding every time on all these different cars. It's just that someone online really, really wants it. And they're just saying, oh, they're obviously gonna pay whatever for it. And I think, I think it works in my favour. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments if you are a trader and you've done that or you've been to other auctions or whatever. I think having those proxy bids in... Um, oh, I'm on the wrong sale. Oh my God. I just realised we're almost about to miss it because I'm logged into the wrong sale. We need dealer sale three, not dealer sale one. So we'll watch. Oh, right, it's on now. See, look, look how low. Still going up fairly strong, but I forget we got all the way up to nine one. So we're going to slow down around the back cap. Oh. Slowing down. I feel like it's almost nerve wracking when when you've got more nerve wracking when you've got a proxy bidding because they're like, are they going to are they going to find my limit or are they going to give up? I reckon they go to nine at least. No, we got it. Eight, nine. So I didn't, didn't nick it like I thought we would, but we still got a good deal. So f what was that? Uh, what was it? Nine, eight? No, not nine, eight. Eight, nine. So we got it for 200 quid under what I was willing to bid. Do we think my proxy bids had something to do with slowing them up a little bit? Just, I don't know. I'd like to think so. I'd like to think I've got the secret knack that I've now given to YouTube and everyone. But hey, -o. you know. I said it first. Yeah, there we are. All right, cool. So that, the other beauty of that is I think it's at Bridgewater. It is at Bridgewater. So we can get that picked up tomorrow. We can go and film it ourselves. So we'll cut that here. We'll see you tomorrow when we're picking this up at BCA. Okay, right. Just before we cut some very nice aerial shots Toby's got of us picking up this Disco 4 at BCA Bridgewater, I've got a little problem I need to fix with the last car that I picked up from BCA Bridgewater, which was this absolutely gorgeous... Audi RS4. I'm absolutely in love with this car, but there is one flaw as far as I'm concerned. Some of you will be aware of this if you're an avid watcher of the channel, that when I unlock this car, you're here. It beeps, and I hate that. I know we demonstrated it on an Audi A1 that we had, how you can turn that on and off using the OBD11, but I'm definitely gonna turn it off on this because it sends a shiver down my spine. But I'm also curious to find out exactly how much more customization we can do. So let's have a look. Right, so in here, which is a tiny box itself, an even smaller little OBD diagnostic tool. So small that it comes with its own key ring so you can keep it on your keys at all time. Very handy for a car trader like myself. All we're gonna do is plug that into the OBD port down here. In that goes. And then we're gonna connect to the OBD VAG app. Right, it's currently detecting our vehicle. I wonder if it'll come up saying A4 or RS4. There we are, Audi RS4. Even shows us a picture of the car with the correct wheels, I might add. It's got the proper V-spoke alloy wheels on here. Currently reading our control units. The cool thing is we can obviously do 
like basic OBD kind of diagnostic reports with this. So for example, when we got this, it said that it had an active adaptive light fault. So that when you know when the lights kind of turn when you're whatever, we already happen to know that I haven't put this on a ramp that it's to do with a little level sensor, but we could check that and scan here as well. So, I mean, let's do that. Let's scan. Do I really want to know how many faults might be in this car? Right, it is scanned 26 different modules and it tells us it's found four faults. So let's have a little look. Engine, what's the fault saying there? Right hydroelectric engine, short to circuit and brake booster, pressure sensor. I don't think we need to worry about those. Brakes. Tire pressure warning. Not going to worry too much about that. Central electronics. Sensor for vehicle leveling. Well, we know that. That's what I was talking about down there, the little sensor. So not too bad at all, actually. Everything else looks OK. So that's always handy to know. We can clear those codes uh, and get rid of them and see whether they crop back up. It give us kind of a real understanding of what might be happening with the car. But most importantly, I'm going to check out apps because I want to see the customization that we can do in here. So I want to know if it does a dial sweep. It already does a dial sweep, but I think you could turn that on and off. So if your car doesn't have like an RS style dial sweep, so when you turn the car on, it swings over, you could potentially activate it using OBD11. There's absolutely loads of stuff in here you can customize by looks of it. Rear wiper arm, assumption display correction, engine start message, speed warning, footwell lights while driving, optical parking system. There's absolutely loads of stuff in here. You can even turn off your seatbelt warning if you're one of those fools who likes to drive without your seatbelt on. In fact, if you wanted to, you know, really up the ante, you could have your media display on. So you can turn on video in motion, which is very naughty, but you could do it. And you could turn off your seatbelt bleeper. So yeah, I mean, it's not recommended, certainly not by me, but you could do it. This is the sort of things you can do. It's quite cool to be able to modify your car, isn't it? Right, this is what we want. Lock and unlock confirmation. Let's change the value. We've currently got it for lock and unlock. We can change it to just lock or off. And I want it off, all the way off. Right, that says it's done. We're gonna shut these doors, we're gonna lock it, and we're gonna find out if we've got some peace and quiet now. Right, so we're ready, let's lock it. Hey, no sound other than the locks. And the same again. So if you've got an Audi or a VAG Group car, you can customize absolutely loads, it would seem. You could spend a whole evening, practically, in your car, modifying things but for me i'm just glad we got that turned off now so if you want to bag yourself one of these little obd 11 diagnostic tools they're really handy to have i highly recommend it i think it's great i keep it in my bag at all times now make sure you check out the link in the description where you can get 10 percent off or use the code sm when checking out Right, so here it is. It's a really nice colour, this. Lighter than I thought from the pictures. All looks pretty good condition, I think. Oh, well, that's our little plastic thing we were talking about. The good news is it's actually quite clean, even under the third row of seats, which usually isn't the case. Oh, looks good down this side as well. Loads of mats, rubber boot mat. That's our broken, what's it we need to sort out. Glove box works. We've got all of our paperwork here. Oh, some gloves. We've got a fridge in there. No, no fridge in that one. Oh, looks good. We'll get it down the farm and we'll see how it drives. They're a bit different, aren't they? They're like the kind of London taxi vans that they make these days. So far, so good though. The seat seems to adjust as it should. We've got a heated seat on, we've got sat-nav working. Another radio. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, previous owner was a murderer for sure. There's a bit of a noisy trim over here, but that's just a bit loose. This door trim on the other side, you could hear when you're idling, but not so much now. It's just rattling away. Tracking probably wants sorting out a little bit. Steering wheel slightly off to the left. 
check out our command shift. No signs of clouds of smoke, so that's good. Yeah, tracking definitely wants sorting out is, I can tell just by doing that, that it's very difficult to describe, but you can feel the car like f moving and flexing. It doesn't really feel like it's coming from the front. It's uh, more of a roll than a turn. So I think maybe it's trackings off slightly. So we'll get that sorted first thing. What have we got in here? Conference ticket. Goes well, brakes well, brakes straight. Mm. Seemed like it pulled to the left a little bit then, but we are on a slightly cambered road here. So it does that. Very annoying bit of trim. But other than that, I'm very pleased with this. Should we see if we go. Yeah, suspension is lowering. Let's go all the way back up. Pump's not noisy, so that's good, because if it has been replaced, they probably put a genuine Land Rover one on. Because the cheap Chinese ones tend to hear them fire up and go. Wah! As they're pumping away, this is nice and quiet. There we are, no more rattles. That's how you fix your 12 grand Disco 4. I'm a genius. Toby's checking it out. He reckons this should be the new uh, shifted metal wagon. The media truck. Yeah, hang out the back, going off-roading, all that sort of stuff. That's not gonna happen. Um, it's pretty clean. It's gonna be ready to go online later on today, I think, with pictures and whatever, but I think we'll wait till we get it back to the garage. We'll give it its clean up that it needs. Quick wipe over probably just for the sake of pictures. And then we'll talk about what bits I think it's gonna need and how much money we think we're gonna make. So I will see you then. So there it is, Toby's just showing you around it. It actually is in really, really nice condition as we thought. Uh, I'm really pleased with this. It drives like a much lower mileage car. We looked through the service history and there's absolutely stacks. There's loads of paperwork in there as well. It's had its cam belts and everything done. Um, so yeah, very, very pleased with this. We'll have a sit down and I'll tell you about all the figures. Right, so we paid 9,312 pounds, including the fees, including the assured report and all that sort of stuff. We're going to probably spend 25 quid, probably less than that, but 25 quid on tracking. And since we found out it's been serviced less than a couple of thousand miles ago and the cam belt and all that sort of stuff, there really isn't a huge amount to do on this. I have put down like £100 worth of labour for a proper valet. It still hasn't really had a proper valet. I just cleaned it, which is terrible. Um, and a PDI. We're going to spend a couple of hours really checking it over and make sure everything is A-OK, -okay, the same as it would be having an MOT. Uh, it's got quite a long MOT till November, so we might do one, but we might not. Let's just assume we're not going to. We have got this up, as you can probably see from the window, for £12,495, which is a gross margin of about £3,000. If we take our VAT out, which is 16.67% of the difference between £12,495 and £9,312, so once we take all that out, including the VAT, it would leave us with a gross margin of £2,527.39. Not bad at all, especially like the minimal amount of effort we're going to have to put into this car. So I'm absolutely over the moon with it. I hope it shows up what a nice colour this is, because it's not really just like your basic silver. It's, it's almost a bit pastel-y. It's got a really nice, it's like a mix, it's like a metallic Nardo grey or something. It's really nice. But that is it really. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. Don't forget, I'm giving away a really nice £2,000 tag for your watch completely free as soon as we hit 75,000 subscribers. 
If you are in the market for a very nice car, well, of course you can check out barrelmotors.co.uk. Don't forget to check out feelgoodcompetitions.com. It's my raffle website where we're raffling off nice cars, watches, cash. You're in a chance to win, and if you don't, you'll know that you've supported a charity along the way, which you can feel good about. That's it for this video. Plenty more coming like this. We're trying to film as many as we can buying different cars, especially interesting ones. So yeah, stick around, keep an eye on the channel. We'll see you next time.